So glad to see so many here in the audience this morning. I hope that you have been blessed so far to be here. And uh, I just pray that uh, this morning as you look into God's Word, that it will impact your life. Uh, you will seek Him out and, and uh, check yourself in the mirror, so to speak. The relationship that you have with God the Father. Being a teacher for so many years, I've heard this line, this saying, quite a bit. Um, I never looked at myself as being very old. Um, I'm getting older by the day. <laughs> um, but I can remember kids, students that I've taught, saying to me, you know, that was then and this is now. You know, times have changed. Things have changed. You know, I can remember when I was... In my, you know, mid-30s, kids telling me, man, Mr. Bishop, you live in the Stone Age, man. You've got to come out and, and live today, you know. And I can just remember these, these statements that were made were usually made to make you feel not only old, but what happened back then is, is nothing to do with going on today. And when I look at Christians sometimes and even the church, Sometimes uh, these ideas that people express are made to make you feel almost ashamed of uh, living some old, ancient theme. People look at the Bible today as being, this is old stuff, man. This is old, old, old writings. Who really cares about it for today? What meaning does this old writing have for me today? And there's great meaning in it. As a Christian, we all know it has great meaning in it. In Hebrews chapter 13, verses 7 through 9, it says, Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried about or carried away with various and strange doctrines. For it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. The idea, I've shared this before, God has not changed. God is the same God that he was a thousand years ago. God is the same God that he was 2,000 years ago. God is the same God he was yesterday. He's the same God. The Bible was the same Bible. It was the same Word of God. It has always been the inspired Word of God. In James chapter 1, 16 through 18, it says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. We've studied that in the book of James in a Sunday morning class. The English Standard Version, when it talks about this idea of the change of the shadow, it says, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Another version says, who does not change like shifting shadow? You ever sat on your front porch before and you saw a tree, the sun's in the sky, and the sun's beating <coughs> down that tree. If you stay there long enough, you'll see the shadow from that tree begin to shift from where it once was. The shadow changes because time's going by. And in that time of change, in that time of shadows, God has not changed. God is still the same God He has always been. And the question is, have you changed? And if you have changed, in what ways have you changed? God is the same. And He's the constant. He's the all-loving. He's the all-caring. He's the all-merciful. He's also the judging God. He's the God that we worship. He's the God that we adore. And he's the God that we follow, and our life 
should reflect those things. He has set us the standard in His Word. The Word hasn't changed. And God hasn't changed either. In Psalm 90, verse 2, it says, Even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God is the constant, and we are ever-changing. How have we changed? And the scripture that was read this morning, I love this scripture. I've been thinking about this for about a month now. Because when I read this, it just it popped out at me. In Jeremiah chapter 6, 16 through 17, it says, Thus says the Lord, Stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk in it. Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not listen. Jeremiah telling God's people, you have changed. And you haven't changed for the good, you have changed for the bad. You have turned your backs on God. You've turned your backs on God. And this morning, as you sit here this morning, and we read these things, and you're listening. How have you changed? First of all, have you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? Because if you have, you will be changed forever. And if you've already accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, are you continuing to walk in the ways of Jesus Christ as set forth in His Word? The last few weeks in teaching class, we've talked about the way churches have changed. And they've not changed for the good, they've changed for the bad. Because they, they have changed away from the Bible. They've gotten away from what God has called us to do. This morning, you partake of communion. And remember Jesus and His sacrifice. We do this once a week. On the first day of the week. Because that's what the early church did. That was the example for us to follow. And yet there are churches out there that have decided... Once a week is too often. When you take it once a week, you take it for granted. We should do it once a month or once every other week. Some churches have even gone to taking it on Saturdays or other days of the week, whenever they feel like taking it. They've gotten away from what the Word of God has said. That's the church. Some churches have done this. Now, in your life, how have you changed? Have you changed recently? Is it for the good? Is it going closer to God? Or are you kind of took a different path? Following something that maybe you shouldn't have followed. Jeremiah warning his people here, God's people here, that if you do not follow <coughs> the ways of God and live these ways, you will never try, you'll never find true happiness. You'll never find spiritual fulfillment. And you can't draw closer to me unless you follow me wholeheartedly. He says, you will not find rest for yourselves. The bottom line is this morning that there's so many things that can bring up into your mind with this scripture, with these verses, and the meaning that it has. When it says return to the ways of old, it's not talking about return to your way of life before you became a Christian. It's talking about following the Word of God wholeheartedly and don't stray from that. As I look at this audience this morning, I see a lot of people out there who have been a Christian for many years many years. They are examples 
They are statements of faith by the way they have lived their lives, the way you've lived your life. And this morning, as you're living your life in Christ, are people still seeing the difference in your life as if I am continuing to follow Jesus Christ in my life? The other question is, have you strayed away? In Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 12, it says, And they said, This is hopeless. That this that is hopeless. So we will walk according to our own plans. And we will everyone obey the dictates of his evil heart. And that scripture just says, We're going to do things the way we want to do. Not according to what you have set down before us. We're living our life for me. I'm living my life the way I want to live. I think I've shared this before that I've been to quite a few high school graduations. When you're leaving high school, it's like I've accomplished something. I finished four years here. I had this whole life ahead of me. And invariably, when someone gives their valedictorian speech, they say, you can do anything you want to do. Live your life the best that you can for yourself. Do the best that you can do. Understand the best that you can do. But the idea is, I need to live my life for the Lord. I need to walk in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and follow Him and continue following Him and keep Him first. Continuing on in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 18, 15. Here's what it says. Because my people have forgotten me, they have, turned, they have burned incense to worthless idols, and they have caused themselves to stumble in their ways from the ancient past to walk in pathways and not on a highway. Now, as I stand before you this morning, you know, it's easy to say, you know what? I would never do what these people did. I would never worship a false idol. I would never denounce Christ. I would never deny that I know Jesus. Those are, I wouldn't do any of those things. These people here are worshiping false idols. I would never do that. And you might have a checklist in your, in your mind saying, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. This being, I go to church three times a week, I go to Bible study, I pray every night. I've done all these things. Checklist, checklist, checklist. But in your life, I'm living it. Is it just a checklist for you? Or is it something, this is who I am. I'm a child of God. I'm a Christian. And I need to look at myself to see, am I living the way that I should be living? And it's easy to say, well, I haven't done any of those bad things. But are you doing the good that you should be doing? This morning, I'm asking you to check your life. This morning, check the relationship that you have with the Lord. Has it changed? And I hope everyone here says it has changed. I hope everyone here can say it has changed for the better. It is stronger. I am walking like I have never walked before. I'm walking for my Lord daily. I've never been this close to Him in my entire life. I hope you can say that. You could say, well, I have changed, but I've gone the other way. I'm not as strong as I once was. I don't do the things that I know that I should be doing. I need to check myself and get back to that. Or even perhaps maybe your life and your walk has become stagnant. I kind of trudge through life, bored, nothing's happening. I, it's almost like I don't care. I used to tell the kids at school, those are words I never want to hear. I don't care. And if you do care, you will check your life with Christ clearly and see, are you walking in His ways? Are you still living your life 
for him? And if you're not, are you ready to step forward? Are you ready to move on and do the things you should be doing? Sometimes we accept things in life higher. Our priorities have changed. And sometimes when our priorities change, we have the world affect us. And we have the world affect us in a negative way. And our once peace that we had in our life, and our life is kind of unbalanced. There's no peace. I'm not at peace in my life because I'm not living my life for the Lord as I should be. I'm struggling. And if you are struggling this morning, you need to have a change. Prayers. You need to say, you know what, I need to get back where I was and move forward from there. In James chapter 1, verse 27, you're going to get to this verse in our Bible class, I promise. It says, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. I want to focus on that last part there. He says, To keep oneself unspotted from the world. The English Standard Version says, To keep oneself unspotted unstained from the world. Another, another version says to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Another one says refusing to let the world corrupt you. They're all negative. And as you sit here this morning, is that you? Has the world left a mark on your life? A spot, a stain, corruption because you've allowed it to. It says in the scriptures, don't give the devil a foothold. Don't give him any room to weasel his way into your life and to get you to do things you shouldn't be doing or worse. To stop loving Jesus the way you know you should be loving. To follow Jesus the way you know you should be following in his footsteps, each and every step of the way, each and every step, each and every day, am I following what Jesus said I should do and the way that I should be living my life? This morning in our discussion in James, we talked about being doers of the word. Christian, the word Christian is a verb. It's an action word. It means action in our lives. If you came in this morning and saw our marquee out there where it says, each and every day that you're living your life, you are preaching a sermon. The sermon you're preaching is your life. How are you living that life? Did you know you're preaching a sermon with your life? Did you know people are watching you? They're looking at you. They're observing you. Are you living your life joyously? Are you living your life for Christ? Are you living your life for self? Or are you living a life that has been stained, corrupted, spotted, jaded by the world? And sometimes it's easy to get caught up in that crookedness. Let me give you two examples here that I looked at this morning. And there's many others besides the ones that I chose. One of the songs we sung this morning was, I'll be a friend to Jesus. It says, he stood there without a friend. He stood there without a friend. In our culture today, there are so many things going on that are contrary to Christ. Against Jesus. Against what Jesus taught. Were you willing to stand next to him and say, I'm standing next to Jesus. I'm living my life for Jesus. He's my friend. I'm going to be his friend. I'm going to continue to walk in his way. No matter what is going on around me. We are living in an ever-changing world. An ever-changing culture. We have seen things take place in our nation. Conduct. 
people living ways that are just horrid. And I mean horrid according to God's standards. And they have become not only acceptable, but they have been embraced. And as a Christian, I am to embrace Jesus and live my life according to His standards. I am not to let the world affect me in a way that will take me away from those standards. The first example I have, in fact, both examples from the Old Testament, and one is Elijah. When Elijah stood on Mount Carmel, he stood up there, and he wasn't there to beat down the opposition. And he wasn't there to say, God is real, my God is true, we're going to beat you down. The reason why Elijah was there is because he wanted to bring God's people back to God because they had strayed. In 1 Kings 18.22, he says this, Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord. I stand here alone as a prophet of the Lord. You all have turned your backs on God. I am alone. Only God is with me and no one else. And then you have the prophets of Baal. There's all these, these prophets of Baal standing there challenging. And we know the story. Elijah beats them all down. God beats them down. But he was there for the people. And that scripture that was read about a trumpet <coughs> was sounded and you ignored it. The whole idea of that is that I have sent people to you to preach you the word. To tell you about God's way. And you haven't listened. You ignored the warnings. You ignored them. I tried to bring you in. You ignored the very things I was trying to rescue, save you, bring you back. You've gone your own way. You've gone the way of the world around you. In verse 37 of the same chapter, Hear me, O Lord. Hear me that this people may know that you are the Lord God. And that you have turned their hearts back to you again. This morning, if, if you have stepped away, you're on the wrong path. Turn your heart back to God. Turn your heart back to Jesus wholeheartedly. Not a little bit, but all of it. Step away from the world. Don't be stained, don't be spotted, don't be corrupted by the world. And it's a strong, it's strong. Satan is out there. Our world is changing, and it's changing against God. And you may not see it that way, but I can tell you this. 30 years ago, no one ever thought and ever taught that gay marriage would be okay. No one ever thought that men would be using the ladies' restroom. No one ever thought that that would take place. And yet here it is. And as our world continues to change into darkness, into evil, into wicked, unto going against God, am I as a Christian standing up for Him with everything that I am? Am I walking his light with his ways? Am I showing his love? Am I showing his mercy? Am I showing what a great God, what a great Jesus is with my life? Or have I gone away from that? Maybe you've given up hope. I hope not. I hope your hope is still in Christ. Christ will change people like he has changed your life. And I hope that he has changed your life and you will continue to walk and change. Change for the better. Change closer and closer and closer. I am closer now than I'll ever be. And tomorrow, I'll be a little bit closer. And the next day, a little bit closer. I'll continue to walk in his paths. 
and do the things that he would have me do. The other example I have is Daniel. You know the story of Daniel. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the things that they went through. But in the beginning of Daniel, I love the verse, Daniel 1, verse 8. And this is what we need to do. 1, verse 8, it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. He purposed in his heart. That means I have set a self, me, myself, for the Lord. I will walk in his ways. I will not follow the ways of the world that's around me because I know it's wrong. And I will be doing these things because God has called me to go beyond living the ways of the world. God has called me to a greater life. Jesus has said, I have promised you life and life to the fullest. Daniel purposed in his heart. This morning, is your heart still purposeful for Jesus? Is it still there? Do you show this in your life? Do you still walk the way you should walk? And you know what? Age doesn't matter. I said this morning in my Bible class. I have met some senior citizens, senior saints, I would call them, who have retired from Christianity. Meaning, I've done all those things. I'm done. I'm just a tired person now. I don't have to let someone younger do it. There's no age limit on living for Jesus. There's no age limit for I'm going to walk in the footsteps of Christ and the world around me is going to be impacted by Jesus through my life. That this morning is the question I'm asking you. Has the world left a mark on you? Or have you left a mark on the world? When I say left a mark on the world, that means... You have lived a life worthy of being called a Christian, and I'm continually walking that way, and people see a difference in my life by the things I do, the things I say, who I am as a person. I am the person of Jesus. People see Jesus in my life. Have you done this? Purposing in your heart and not just once, but you continue on. So often, I don't, can they, I don't know if you can remember, when did you become a Christian? When was the date? When was the year? How long have you been a Christian for? In the Christian walk, there's always some ups and downs in there. There's always never a sky ride all the time. There's difficulties. But in your life, have you purposed yourself? <coughs> so, chapter 16, 7 and 8. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in, in, the, in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. And the idea of not being moved means I'm not being moved away from following Christ. I'm not being moved by the world that's around me. The world that says, look over here. Wouldn't it be great to do this? Wouldn't it be great to be part of this? Look what we have to offer over here. And what they have to offer over there can be very appealing. Because it's about living for me. Putting myself first and not putting Christ first. And here's the thing about this. I say putting Christ first. When you put Christ first, you are putting yourself first. That's a true blessing, to be this Christian wholeheartedly following in the footsteps of Jesus. There's so much love, so much hope, so much greatness in living the life that the Lord has called you to live and continue living. Perhaps you've been ruled by the world by circumstances, laziness. Sometimes we come up with excuses. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 12 through 14. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take.
take heed lest he fall. No temptation is overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. And in Jeremiah chapter 7, back to Jeremiah, chapter 7, 22 through 24. For I did not speak to your fathers or command them the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this is what I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but follow the counsels and the dictates of their evil hearts, and went backward and not forward. That is the warning. That is this morning's lesson. Which direction are you going? Are you going backward? Or are you going forward? Are you going to go forward with Jesus in your life? Or you have stepped back away from what Jesus has said, I will give you life and give it to you abundantly. In place of that, you're living the life that the world has presented you. The question this morning is, which is it? And I pray this morning, I certainly hope that you are in a good place in your life. That you can say, I am wholeheartedly following Jesus Christ with everything that I am. The world has not stained me. It has not corrupted me. It has not spotted me. I'm clean before God because of the forgiveness that Jesus has gotten in my life. But as I live my life, Am I walking according to his ways? Am I walking in the ways of old? That God has laid down in his word for us to follow and to keep following. So the question this morning is, I'll be a friend of Jesus. Even if I have to stand alone, I will be a friend of Jesus. I will continue to walk how he has showed me the way. Walking in his footsteps. I will not let the world affect me. This morning, if the world has affected you, you feel like you're, I don't know, ten steps back. You can never catch up to what you think you should be. That's the kind of prayer. That's the time to be uplifted. That's the time for you to recognize I've got to come back and not come back to Jesus 80% or 90%. I'm going to come back to Jesus 100%. I am not going to allow the world to affect me. Daniel purposed in his heart. This morning, are you continuing this purpose in your life? Have you purposed in your heart to follow Him each and every day? Every step you take, everywhere you go, everything you do, I'm in. I'm all in, Jesus. Help me in time to get tough. If you're not there, it's time to get back there. And it's time to move forward. It's time to move forward with Jesus in your life. This morning, if you have any needs at all, let the needs be known. If you have not accepted Jesus, I say it every time. What are you waiting for? What's holding you back? I want Jesus with me each and every day, each moment I live, because he has promised me a full, happy, abundant awesome life with him that no one else can give to me. Why wait any longer? 
This morning, if you're struggling in any way, you have not purposed in your heart, it's time to get back to that purpose. Whatever your needs are, please let them be known now as a fantasy. Please be seated. 